springs. This is what we're going to look at today in work done and also elastic potential energy. So you will be hopefully doing this lab, right? So you can see as I stretch the string, I am storing energy in that spring. And what happens when I store energy? Take a look. The spring will boing, boing. It will bounce up and down. So in this video, we are going to derive an expression for the energy stored in spring before we level up and talk about the kinetic energy because obviously the spring is moving and also potential energy. Don't be distracted by my shadow at the back. This was actually a recording of an experiment. I will see you in the derivation video. All right, we're back in our notes. So here you can see I've drawn a spring, but to make our derivation a little bit more easier, I'm going to put my spring spring horizontal okay and the reason why i care to put the spring horizontal is so that uh, when i apply force uh, there's no you don't have to think about the weight of the spring or gravity that one later when we level up first purpose of this portion of the video is to derive the energy stored in the spring so let's say i have this spring and i apply an external force like maybe there's a, like a very light cardboard here and i apply an external force f in this direction okay so if this is the original length of the card obviously this will cause the spring to compress maybe it will go smaller like this okay and this is the uh, final position of the card and you will see that the spring or the system has actually moved by a distance of x okay so i don't know whether you know from the previous video, we talk about work done, right? And work done can be calculated using Fs if you have two conditions. Number one, F and displacement parallel. And in this case, it looks pretty parallel to me. Okay. And number two, your uh, force is constant. Now look at this spring you already can tell that the force is not constant. You may be thinking, Miss, how you know the force is not constant? Okay, I give you one. Remember our friend Hooke's law? Hooke's law is defined by this graph, F against X. Okay, so let's say this is already directly proportional. Mm -hmm. Straight line. So you will be able to tell that when I compress the string, Let's say if I compress it from a zero to whatever arbitrary position here, maybe x1, you will notice that the force will increase proportionally. Okay, so let's say I put numbers lah. Maybe this is 10 cm. Maybe this is 10 newton. So this means if it's 5 cm, this is 5 newton, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this uh, graph, right, Hooke's law, where force is proportional to extension, tells me that the greater the change in length, the more force I need for the next change. So, for example, if I want to compress 15 cm, I need to apply 15 newton of force. Okay, so your F here is obviously not constant. So since we cannot do this, so we need to use the generalized format where F is equal to the area under the Fx graph. So I want you to think about work done. Okay, this is your work done here. Area under your Fx graph. This. Okay, so I'm going to use an arbitrary coordinate here. That means any, any point here with the symbol of the force. I mean x and f okay all right a few things the main idea here is work done by the external force is stored as elastic potential energy so elastic pe so most of the time i'll call it epe okay is the uh work done by the external force in changing the uh, dimensions. In this case, it's one dimension, uh, dimensions, of an object. 
So the work done is stored as elastic potential energy. Okay, so whenever there is work done, there is energy stored, there's some form of energy conversion. And in this case, our energy conversion is our good old uh, elastic potential energy. All right, so based on this uh, definition or explanation, we can say that the elastic potential energy is equal to area under the Fx graph. In this case, we can easily tell that this will be half triangle what Fx. Okay. But also from Hooke's law, since F is equal proportional to X, right? We can actually rewrite the equation as F is equal to Kx. So I can substitute F is equal to Kx into this equation. I have elastic potential energy is equal to half kx times x, this will be half kx squared. So there are two equations that you can use. If you want to use area under the graph, you can. This will be half fx, okay? Where f is the force required to change that length and x is the length change. So it doesn't matter whether it's compressed or being stretched. Or if let's say you have the spring constant, just a reminder for you, throwback. This K is known as spring constant. Okay. And I think you can probably tell the gradient of this graph is equal to K. All right. So this is the second equation that involves your spring constant, assuming you don't have force. But my dude, since these two is linked together, if you know both, you can easily swap and derive. All right. One last thing. Occasionally, instead of force against distance, you will be required to draw a graph of elastic potential energy against distance. You look at this equation. Oh. So from this EPE is equal to half kx squared. Because of this x squared, and here is against x, you will get a quadratic graph. A beautiful quadratic graph like this. Okay, because of the x squared, EPE is half kx squared. All right, so when we store energy in the spring, what we are actually doing is we are changing uh, the separation between atoms. Whether it's an elastic band or is it a spring, anything that can be stretched, we can store energy inside either by stretching it or compressing it. And that energy can be calculated using half fx, which is the area under the graph, or half kx squared. All right. So that's it for this pretty short video, I hope. I'll see you in the examples. Bye-bye.